You may have heard claims from anti-mask people that wearing a mask during the COVID-19 pandemic can be detrimental to your health. It doesn't matter whether it's an approved N95 respirator or a disposable surgical mask or a reusable homemade fabric mask. The crux of their argument is that viruses are so small that the fabric weave of the mask isn't fine enough to trap them. The virus will just sneak in between the fibers of the cloth that make up the mask. They also claim that the mask blocks oxygen when you inhale and prevents carbon dioxide from escaping when you exhale. Thus, your body quickly suffocates when you wear a mask. Now, it should be obvious to anyone with even the most basic critical thinking skills that this cannot be true. After all, people wear protective masks all the time for various reasons, and I don't see anyone dropping dead from the practice. Doctors and nurses in hospitals frequently have to wear N95 respirators for hours on end during their shift. Everyone on a surgical team wears masks, and I have yet to hear of any of them keeling over from asphyxiation. But in the interests of education, I've thrown together this quick video to illustrate why this claim simply does not hold up. Here we have a scanning electron micrograph of a human hair. You can see the scale marker at the bottom showing 10 micrometers. Quick refresher for those not used to metric prefixes. We start with one meter, a millimeter is one thousandth of a meter, a micrometer is one millionth, a nanometer is one billionth, and a picometer is one trillionth of a meter. Human hair generally ranges from about 17 to 180 micrometers. Keep that in mind as we go back to the photo of the human hair. At this zoom level, a grain of salt would take up pretty much the entire screen. Now you may not have noticed, but I overlaid a picture of a coronavirus. Can't see it yet? How about now? That little speck in the middle of your screen is about the size of a SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19. We'll have to zoom in even more to see any sort of detail. By now, everyone is familiar with this illustration. Coronaviruses have a spherical envelope with little spikes sticking out of the surface. SARS-CoV-2, in particular, is thought to have an average size of about 125 nanometers, but could be as big as 200 nanometers or as small as 50 nanometers. They are so small that a thousand of these could fit across the width of a single human hair. For sake of argument, let's assume that the coronavirus is on the small side, only 50 nanometers. This is really tiny, and not something you can even see with a normal light microscope, which is why we need powerful electron microscopes. So, how big are oxygen molecules and carbon dioxide molecules? Remember how small a virus is compared to a human hair? Take that scale and apply it again. A single virus particle is about a thousand times larger than an oxygen or carbon dioxide molecule. Let's zoom into this section of the virus to have a look. Those two specks in the middle of your screen are an oxygen molecule and a carbon dioxide molecule. Along with nitrogen and a bunch of other gases, they make up the air we breathe. Gas molecules are so small, they are measured in picometers, which is one trillionth of a meter. At this scale, physical size almost has no meaning the way you and I normally understand it. There are specialized membranes that can filter out gas molecules like this, but there is no way anything we use as a face mask can do this. So, ask yourself, if a SARS-CoV-2 virus is a thousand times larger than air molecules, how is it possible that a mask can let in a virus, but at the same time block oxygen and carbon dioxide? It doesn't make sense, right? And in fact, many demonstrations have shown that wearing a mask does not appreciably affect oxygen levels in your blood, nor does it cause carbon dioxide toxicity. As I mentioned at the start of this video, if masks were this dangerous, how come we don't see doctors and nurses and surgeons dropping like flies? After all, they wear them every day for hours on end. Surely, those of us in the general public can wear a mask for the half hour or so it takes to get groceries or grab a coffee. Makes you wonder what else these anti-maskers are lying about. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions about the facts presented in this video or would like help debunking anti-masker claims, please leave a comment below and I'll try to reply to you as soon as I can.